Okay, so in the last video we set up a bit of general theory of framework or general theory of vibrating systems, and now we're going to go and apply that specifically to um, a loaded string. So in this case here, um, we're imagining still um, basically just a whole bunch of beads on a massless string. And we're going to assume that our displacements off of um, equilibrium, they could either be transverse, as I've drawn here, or they could be longitudinal, as I've drawn here. It doesn't matter which. Um, but they'll be measured as a displacement from equilibrium. Um, since we're going to be looking at n of these, any individual displacement will keep small. So let the q's be small. All right. So with that caveat, or certainly I should say the difference in the q's be small. That's really all we need. Um, we can write the potential energy as one half k, where k is the coupling constant at each join in our loaded string, um, times q1 squared plus q2 minus q1 squared, plus and so forth, until we get to qn minus qn minus 1 squared, plus finally qn squared. All right. And so Similarly, we can write the kinetic energy as 1 half m times q1 dot squared plus q2 dot squared plus and so forth until we get to qn dot squared. And then we can go ahead and write our Lagrangian. So our Lagrangian will be t minus v. So we can pull one half out in the front. Just say sum over k um, m q k dot squared minus k times q k plus one minus q k squared. All right, so. We do have to be a little careful here with this um, because we're running, our sum is running from 1 to n. So when q here is, um, I'm sorry, we're going to have to run it now from 0 to n. And so when we do that, um, we don't have a q0 defined. So that's a little bit of a problem. And we don't have a, when we get to n, we don't have a qn plus 1 up here. But that's okay. We will let q0 equal qn plus 1 equal 0 at all times. So basically, you can imagine that we stuck like a little imaginary mass over here and over there at positions 0 and n plus 1. All right, so with that, um, we can go ahead and find the equations of motion for particle number k. All right, so that will be partial L partial QK minus DDT of partial L partial QK dot equals zero. All right, so now when we do that, um, from here, we're going to have two terms um, that are going to have our particle k in it. Uh, one of them is going to be when um, our iterator is k. The other is when our iterator is k minus 1, because k minus 1 plus 1 will give me k there. So I pick up two such terms. So I wind up getting um, k times q k plus 1 minus q k 
minus k times qk minus qk minus 1. And then from here, though, this is well behaved. Uh, this will just give me minus m qk double dot equals 0. OK, so we can rewrite this then as um, if I multiply through and everything here, <coughs> I can rewrite this as m qk double dot equals k times qk plus 1 minus 2kqk plus kqk minus 1. Okay, so with that, that gives us a clue of what our mass and coupling matrices have to, coupling constant matrices have to look like. So my mass matrix is going to be just M's down the main diagonal. And this is going to go on for a very long time. All right. And my k's are going to be a banded matrix. So I'll we'll have to write a few rows in just to show. I mean, I have a 2k, a minus k, and then zeros out as far as the eye can see. Then the next row I'll have minus k, 2k, minus k, 0 as far as the eye can see. 0, minus k, 2k, minus k, as far as the eye can see goes and then here will be zeros as far down as the eye can see same there and then these diagonals extend forever so that's called a banded matrix all right so we'll just go back to the well that we've gone to before we will guess a solution qk equals some ak times e to the i omega t and we'll allow ak to be complex. All right, so now you could go ahead and plug into the secular determinant, but I just showed you in the last video that basically here lies dragons. Um, mostly because once you get to 5 by 5, you can't even solve it. But if we take this relation here, star, right, we can go ahead and stick our trial solution back into star. So we'll go ahead and plug into star. So star will become, okay, so the mqk double dot is going to bring down a i omega squared, so minus omega squared, and I've got m, so I'll have minus m omega squared, a k, e to the i omega t, and that will equal from here, we have k times qk plus 1, so it's k a k plus 1, e to the i omega t minus 2k a k e to the i omega t. Um, let's slide this all over a little bit. There we go. Plus k a k minus 1 e to the i omega t. All right. Small favor, all the e to the i omega t's drop. And we get, you can either call this a recursion relation or a linear difference equation, <coughs> but either way what we have left is minus m omega squared equals k times a k minus 1 minus 2 a k plus a k plus 1, and the edge cases are automatically taken care of because a0 is equal to 0, and a um, n plus 1 is also equal to 0. All right, so 
for our um, AKs here, we will try a solution. Um, AK equals some real. Um, A times E to the I K phi minus delta. All right. So we'll just go stick that into the recursion relation and see what we get, huh? Oops, I dropped my AK right there. So we have minus m omega squared a e to the i k phi minus delta. Oh, I can already tell you I need to move this over. All right, that will equal. Um, K and everybody's got a common A, so let's pull that out too. And then I will have an E to the I. Now here I'll have a K minus 1, phi minus delta, minus 2, E to the I, K, E to the I, let's do this right, E to the I, K, phi minus delta. And then finally, plus e to the i, k plus 1, phi minus delta. Close the parenthesis. All right, again, small favors here. First thing I can do is just ditch the a's. Yes. The next thing I can do is I can ditch all the e, e to the minus i deltas and divide those all through. That makes that go away. And then I can divide through by e to the i k phi. So now I'll be left with minus m omega squared equals k times e to the i phi here um, plus e to the minus i phi minus 2 now I look at that and remember from Euler's identities, this is equal to 2 cos phi. So that'll equal k times 2 cos phi plus 2. All right. So then I get um, omega squared would be 2k over m times Oops, I'm sorry, that's minus 2 there. My bad. Times 1 minus cos phi. All right, and if I remember my half angle, double angle relations, this is 2 sine squared phi over 2. So I'll write this as 4k over m sine squared phi over 2. All right, now we have n solutions that we have to keep track of, so we'll throw in some subscripts. Um, we'll say that omega squared capital N equals 4 k over m sine squared of phi n over 2, where my big N is allowed to run from 1 to little n. All right. So um, our AKN be equal to AN cosine K phi N minus delta N. All right, so let's see what we can do with this. We can look at the boundary conditions. So remember, we need that A0n equals A times little n plus 1 times big N equals 0, right? So let's go and take a look at what the A0n equals 0 boundary condition requires. So A0n is going to be equal to An times the cosine of k phi n minus delta n equals 0. So 
this is going to require um, my delta n to be an odd multiple of pi over 2. So I may as well just choose pi over 2. By doing that, this becomes cosine of something minus pi over 2, right? So um, when I, oh, I'm sorry, the k here is 0. Just make that clear. So by doing that, my um, akn will be equal to an cosine k phi n minus pi over 2, which is an sine k phi n. OK, that's helpful. Now that we got that, let's look at the other boundary condition, the a times n plus 1 n equals 0. OK, that one's going to require a sub n plus 1 n equals, so there'll be a n times the sine of k phi n equals 0. And here we're letting my k be equal to n plus 1. So the only way that that's going to work out is that's going to require um, n plus 1 times phi n to be equal to L pi, where L is equal to 1, 2, and so forth. All right, so then that puts a condition on my phi n. It's going to be equal to L pi over n plus 1. But we can do better than that. We have little n distinct values of my omega k squareds, right? And so that means that my little l has to run from 1 to n. So that means I may as well just replace the little l with big N. n pi over n plus 1. All right. So we now finally have that our omega n will be equal to root k over m, so that's our omega naught sine of n pi over 2 times n plus 1. All right. So just rewriting that a bit. Um, so omega n is 2 omega naught times the sine of n pi over 2 n plus 1. And our a k, whoa, oops, our a k n will be equal to a times the sine of n pi k over n plus 1. In both cases, my n runs from 1 to little n. All right, so with all of that, I can substitute back in and finally get my generalized coordinates. So my qk is equal to sum n equals 1 to n of a n sine n pi k over n plus 1 times the cosine of omega, whoa, I got of omega n t minus, we'll call it epsilon n for my initial phase. Just be consistent with the book. All right. So if you're vibrating in a pure mode, We can drop the summation and just say qk equals a sine n pi k over n plus 1 
cosine omega n t minus epsilon n. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and work towards, but not quite yet, getting to the wave equation. So now we're going to start letting um, my n go towards infinity. So we're going to have to come up with a better way to enumerate these things. So I go all the way over here. This will be k equals 0 over there. That point is fixed. All the way over here is k equals n plus 1. This point is also fixed. Let's imagine it's a transverse wave just for the grins. So we'll have q1. OK, enough of that. We can draw in a few more here and there. And then maybe, I don't know, something like that. So we'll draw a line through to there. Yeah. And then we can say, like, this distance here is my q1. That distance there is my q2. That would be my q3, and so forth. And then finally, this would be my qn, qn minus 1, qn minus 2, and so forth. All right. The book argues, and I'm just going to quote, because I think it does a good job, that the um, our coupling constant will go as f over d, which will go as the tension over the separation. And I think both, if it's longitudinal or transverse, um, I think it, in any event, sounds eminently reasonable. Now, so we're letting n tend towards infinity, but again, keep in mind, it's not really infinity. We we'll only have like a mole of molecules or something like that. But in any event, n is really, really, really big. So, at most, you're probably only going to be worried about maybe the first few million or so normal modes, right? So n is really is it exactly equal to really, really big. So that means that um, our big n for any case we'll ever care about will be much less than n plus 1. All right. So the reason I do that is then my sine functions here I can, whoops, I can just plain replace with the argument. Yeah. All right my omega n's there. So that's what I'm going to do. Right there. Okay, so we can say that my omega n is approximately 2 omega naught times n pi over 2 n plus 1. Cancel, cancel. And putting in what my omega naught is, that's root k over m times n pi over n plus 1. All right. Or I can take that a little further and say that my k is equal to f over d, right? Following the book's argument there. So we get f over m d. Um, times n pi over n plus 1. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and multiply and divide this by d and then bring this d inside. So I can rewrite this as f over m over d times n pi over n plus 1 d. All right. So I'm going to pull the 
and the out. Right. Mm -hmm. So my n plus 1d, that's just the length of the string. So I can write this as n times pi over l times root f over m over d. All right. So we can define the linear mass density to be m over d. So we get that our nth frequency is n times pi over l times root f over mu. which is a result you saw in your lower division mechanics class. And if you had me, I told you that the book at that level basically fed you a big line, but now you know how to really get it. All right, so let's look at, whoops, yeah, right look at particle K in mode N. So we can get its location as Q K N equals A sine N pi K over N plus 1 times the cosine of omega N T. And here I am um, without any loss of generality, I'm letting um, epsilon n equal zero. It's not going to change anything. All right, so now we can get our k, which is counting how many molecules I am over, um, by dividing its position x over by the spacing. So let's go and substitute that in. So my QKN is equal to A sine N pi X over N plus 1 D cosine omega N T. So again, I can look at that and say, oh, but that's L down there. So this will be equal to A sine n pi x over l times the cosine of omega n t. Now, at this point, we're still keeping in mind that we have a total of like 10 to the 23rd molecules on the string. Um, so it would probably be just a lot easier if instead of trying to count the individual n to get out there, it will be a lot easier for us to um, actually just replace it by an approximation where we loc where we reference it in terms of x. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So instead of saying k, we're just going to refer to qn as a function of x and t um, because we've located our k this way. So now this is discrete. We're pretending it's a continuous function. It's not going to be a big error. Um, a sine n pi x over l cosine omega n t. All right, and you've seen this before in your lower division mechanics. You would have written that, um, the n pi over l part right there, um, as the nth angular wave number. So we recall that kn equals n pi over l, I'm sorry, equals from our lower division mechanics. We recall that the wave number will also be equal to 2 pi over lambda n, and our omega n will be equal to 2 pi times the frequency that that mass point is oscillating at. So we'll let our wavelength n be 2 pi over L, and our frequency be omega n over 2 pi. 
All right, so with that, we are good to take the, in the next video, to finish this out by um, coming up with the wave equation and seeing what it has to say.